Welcome to the last module of the Agile Operations Fundamentals course. In this one, we're going to talk about the pitfalls and we're going to give you some tips and tricks. And we're going to do a quick recap of the entire course at the end. So the key pitfalls to watch out for when you are working Agile in an operational environment is that if you improve one area, sometimes it can cause significant disruption or loss or changes in another area. So try and be a bit conscious of this and try to address the entire value stream rather than just one little part of the silo. Try to get the team to do the work. It's not advisable to have an external group come in to change or transform the team itself. The team should own this process. The team should be working agile and continuously improving themselves as opposed to having an external team come in, whether it's consultants or advisors or whoever, and try to change them. Sometimes teams have just too many initiatives going on at the same time, too many change initiatives happening, and this can cause a lot of uh, disruption to the process and stifle growth and continuous improvement. The testing of the proposed solution should take place before you decide to roll it out. However sane the solution may sound and however realistic the ideas may be, it's always advisable to test them before you start a large rollout or change program. The lack of measurement discipline is another pitfall that I see quite often. Measurement is key to continuous improvement and it does take discipline. Try and make sure that key teams measure the six or seven key metrics in order to drive that continuous improvement. Another area that uh, teams do struggle with is when they get into doing very detailed value stream mapping. Some of the lean processes that I've observed take something up to 12 weeks to map the as-is process. Now, while that may be useful in some cases, we're talking about working agile here. We're talking about fast light loops. And in module six, we talked about how you can do this in an agile way and deliver tremendous improvements in a short period of time. Paralysis by analysis, trying to get the right numbers, trying to analyze everything to the nth degree can also stop a team from improving. Remember, it's not about perfection. It's about continuous improvement. The final pitfall is that teams come up with great ideas to improve, but never spend the time or make the resources available to actually implement these improvements properly. So try and focus on that in order to make sure that the ideas that the team come up with are resourced appropriately in order to make them work. So here are some uh, tips and tricks. The first one is tackle an end-to-end -end process that adds real customer value try and get the leaders on board as well. It's important that the team leaders uh, form the team of teams and champion this continuous improvement together with the teams. Be honest about the problems, be honest about the struggles you're facing and about the state of affairs. Don't try and cover things up or find blame. Keep the process improvements small. Don't try and chew off two big pieces. Yes, it would be ideal to improve everything at the same time, but that can bog you down into endless change. So make sure you have Kaizen in place or small continuous improvement. Don't forget to have fun. It's very important that as a team, you must have fun. Share the learnings and success stories with the other teams. Make sure that you have brown bag sessions and other things with the groups to spread the knowledge. And once you've ensured that you've improved, don't sit back on your laurels. Make sure you push further and ask yourself that one vital agile question all the time. How do I get better? So finally, in this course, to summarize, we've covered the pattern introduction. We've talked to you about uh, how teams can start working agile in the operate mode. What is the role of leaders and what they can do? We've also talked about how you mobilize a team in order to do a little more major process improvements. What's the next step of understanding the problem and the desired outcome? The all important value stream mapping technique. How do you come up with options and strategize solutions? How do you test, validate, and implement them? And finally, we talked about measures and metrics. And that brings us back to this 
module which is the final one in the series. Quick summary, the one that we covered here was the operations execution pattern. It has five phases like every other agile pattern. We have the mobilize phase, the understand, explore, build, test, implement and of course the operate phase. We talked about how most teams are in the operate phase and we covered what teams have to do in order to work agile. We also looked at what the leaders need to do in order to work agile. We talked about the mobilize process and how you get teams together in a workshop environment in order to get continuous improvement underway. The understand stage where you understand both problem and the desired outcome, where you look at options and the hypothesis for improvement, where you test the hypothesis, evaluate it and finally implement it and then see yourself back into the operate phase into a continuous loop. Make sure you do the behavior practices like the social contracts and the mood marbles together with the team, empower the teams, make sure the teams own the process and all the metrics. We talked about waste and bottlenecks and how you find the waste and the bottlenecks and how do you remove them. We also discussed uh, the importance of shared understanding across the silos and within the teams itself. And finally, we talked about the wisdom of the crowd and how important it is to have the entire group involved using the workshopping technique. And we talked about agile value stream mapping that fantastic little practice that would help you identify waste and bottlenecks and help you improve. The metrics keep you on track and indicate your progress. And there is always that fantastic metric, which is the process efficiency percentage, which is the activity time divided by the total cycle time and shown as a percentage. We gave you some tips and tricks. And finally, I'd like to say, just give it a try. In the words of Yoda, do or do not. There is no try. The best way to get something done is to begin. I wish you all the best on your Agile journey. And if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to go over to the Agile community where we have our coaches and a lot of information awaiting you. Thank you very much. I'm Philip Abernathy and I hope you've enjoyed this journey.